Okay, so I really liked the apartment. It did surprise me when I was watching it. I was expecting this to be a screwball comedy with a little drama, like I mentioned in the non-spoiler review. And it was that way for, I would say, the first hour. And then suicide rears its ugly head in this movie, which I was kind of surprised by when I started watching this. In the middle of the movie, when Shirley MacLaine and McMurray's character uh, are in Jack Lemmon's apartment, basically he's trying to convince her character to, I don't know, uh, still be with him even though he's married. She did hint at certain things like that she was about to do what she was, uh, she, what she did. But the fact that they went through with it is something that really surprised me in this, in, in this movie, especially with how Jack Lemon caught or, or found out that she tried to commit suicide, which is coming home from a bar and <laughs> with another woman. It really surprised me that the movie went to that dark of a corner. The thing that I was worried about when that happened was that either the movie was going to get too serious, then maybe the twist was Shirley McLean's character dies, <laughs> essentially, or they wouldn't be able to thread the needle to where the suicide attempt doesn't drag the film down into a very dark corner, and it's really hard to claw its way back up to have much lighter, uh, funnier comedy when after that happens. And I gotta say that the film does a really good job trying to, like, threading that needle, needle to a certain extent. And it's written in an adult way, because I, I think a lot of movies now would over-dramatize the, the, the suicide attempt. Like, for example, y you never see... C.C. Baxter or Jack Lemmon's character get angry, really, with Shirley MacLaine's character, what she did. He feels sorry for her, and he knows he, she's in a delicate situation, and he treats her with respect, and he treats her pretty well, and and to a point where he pities her, sure, but he he does what I think most adults would do in that, in that situation, I think, uh, in that situation, where... They wouldn't want to try to upset her more because of what she just went through or the fear of maybe what she might do in retaliation. So he's very even keeled despite being in a predicament, I would say. And, and they did that scene really well, I think, in that whole section of the movie. They, they, they did it really well because, like I said, a lot of other movies, especially now would really over-dramatize that. And they didn't. They made it uh, still... Su they still ma they, they gave it the levity it, it needed, but it not only felt realistic in the way that they were doing it, aside from the fact that she didn't go to a hospital, but we'll, we'll gloss over that, <laughs> but they also... They still remain true to the character, I, I would think, because I would have never... If C.C. Baxter, or Jack Lemmon's character were to get overly dramatic in that circumstance when he was never overly dramatic throughout the entire movie when he was being stepped on and when his heart was getting broken and stuff like that, it would have felt off. Some might have been understanding of it, but it really would have felt kind of off in this movie. With that scene specifically, which is the second act where the suicide happened and Cece is uh, uh, nursing her back to health... I think it was really well done. I, I was very surprised by it because I, first of all, I was surprised by the fact that they had a suicide in this movie, in a suicide attempt in this movie, but I was also surprised they were able to thread the needle to not only give it the levity it deserves, but also sprinkle in some comedy after the fact uh, when she's starting to get better. Because again, most other movies would probably make this a little too serious. I definitely like the ending of the movie uh, 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 more than I thought I would. Uh, the ending basically, 
again, this is this is I think a, a testament to how great the writing is. Other comedy, other romantic movies, dramas, comedies would have the heroine realizing that she's in an untenable relationship that's not going to work, and the, and the man's not worth it, and she'll go running to C.C. Baxter, and they kiss and they fall in love and da 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 da, and some of that happens. She does leave the boss and then runs to C.C. Baxter's apartment. But the fact that they didn't go for the cheap ending, which is the the kiss, the hug, the embrace, the I love you and this and that, and they kept at it, they kept the characters true to what they are, I thought was a very well done move at the end of the movie. Yes, of course, CeCe Baxter professes his love to her, but she doesn't. <laughs> Even though he says, just, I think she says, just cut the cards already, which I thought was was nice and was adorable uh, in a sense. It was really uh, the right move in this movie because I think if they would have done the standard route, it would have felt cheap. But even though, even though in a sense it was the standard route where the heroine realizes that she has a better man that she can go to and goes to that better man that you're supposed to feel more for than the man she was with... They didn't do the standard thing, which I, which I liked. I, I definitely liked that uh, they did that in this movie. Yeah, like the writing is fantastic in this movie. Like I'm, I'm thinking about it more and more, and I, I'm picking apart more things that uh, while trying to find things I don't like, I'm picking up more things that I like in this movie. So yeah, uh, like I also liked how they didn't bombard the fact that the bosses. Uh, pretty much a philanderer. Uh, you don't learn until halfway through the film that the thing that he is doing to the main heroine is something he's done numerous times before, including his own secretary. Ugh. God, that's gotta be... That's that's terrible. So, yeah. I'm trying to figure out more stuff that I didn't like, but I'm, I'm not coming up with it, really. So, yeah, that's it, really. I definitely enjoyed this movie. So let's get into the final thought. My final thoughts on uh, the apartment. This is a very good romantic drama comedy movie. Very good. Do I like this more than some like it hot? No, but they are two very different films. I think I definitely enjoyed the performances of Shirley MacLaine in this movie. I like Jack Lemmon as well. The screenplay is very good, like very well done for a romantic drama comedy. Uh, and the fact that they went in different directions that I wasn't expecting and they stuck the landing uh, like very well without really not a hitch at all, I thought was a was really good in this movie. Like I can't say how much I like the writing on this film enough. I am going to give this movie four stars. I don't usually give five stars for movies when I first watch them. That usually is something I... I uh, develop into and realize that, hey, that's a five-star movie. I should probably get a five stars. This could be one of those that has it, but I'm going to give it four stars. I did like the performance of Jack Lemmon, but Shirley MacLaine, I think, is the star of the movie. She's excellent. I think she has the best performance. She is the most charming and the most likable of the characters, and when she goes through what she goes through, you really invest and you feel for her in this movie. Uh, four stars for The Apartment. Uh, very good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I think I bought this at a sale uh, before Christmas. So I'm going to look forward to that and probably uh, look at the special features and maybe watch it again. We'll see. 